Yeah, David Dread of Steel Pulse, and I'm saying heal to Lion Voice because it's time that the lion have its voice, have its own story. Says I'm stepping out here. Hear me now. Yeah, the lion's voice. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> Well, from to us, a son was born and a child was given. I want to ask you a question. Have you got your book? Ali Selassie's Ethiopia, Volume 1, The Rise of the Priest Warrior King. I've read the book in its entirety, and I must say it's very inspirational, very informative, and very, very historical, right? Let him call him Christopher Ryan. When he was born, rain fall from the sky. Let him call him Christopher Ryan. When he was grown in here, planes he fly. They call him Christopher Ride. I can break the chain, beep not, don't cry. Them call him Christopher Ride. Read your revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. Then, born near the city of Harar, the inspiration for Bob Marley's guitar. People crowd him like some big superstar. It no matter if I'm England. There were other significant, you know, things. Because remember that the Redeemer in the Christian church, they always, I said he would come from the sky, you know. Um, there's analogies in the Bible about he rides on the wings of the wind. You know, there's all of this um, analogies. And when we look at the visit of his majesty, when the people from all over Jamaica, country, um, town, everyone come together and they were looking into the sky, guess what they saw? I hear plane, so his majesty did come from the sky. Greetings in that divine name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, glory and honor in the name of his chosen queen, Empress Wazero Menen. My name is Kwasi Bansu, aka the Chasmach Kwasi, aka Ras Kwasi, aka the Reading Ras, aka the Pan-African Happy Man. I'm an entertainment attorney, I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an actionist, but right now, I'm the host of the lion voice welcome to the lion voice network we are moving on onward and onward what we say forward ever backwards never so we give thanks for all the subscribers that have been coming in the new subscribers today the topic is groundation day what is Groundation Day? Groundation Day is the day when His Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I visited Jamaica, April 21st, 1966. So the 21st was yesterday. Today is the 22nd. So we just want to reflect on one of the most important days in the Rastafari calendar. What is the name? This the name throw a wrench in Babylon plan because every time they want to say that, well, the emperor don't deal with Rastafari, we always have to bring up the gold medallions that were presented to the leadership of Rastafari. And I'm going to talk about some other facts um, because as an attorney, I like to call this the divine ratification of Rastafari movement in the flesh. And we have reasons why we said that. So we're going to get into all of the things around the groundation. Also, we have to uh, recognize that it was also the first visit to the Caribbean. However, because of the rise of the Rastafari movement in Jamaica, it was particularly important 
so we have to before we jump into the topic you know that we have to big up the lion pride um, if you subscribe you are part of the lion pride and i have to big up the lion pride on patreon because why the lion pride on patreon they didn't just um watch the video love the content they decided to invest in the platform they want to see it grow and for all of the item who would like to join the lion pride because the lion pride on patreon any ecosystem that you're building you have to have your core and your base your foundation um, and I keep saying this is the greatest time in history to ever become a content creator because we have access to a global community. So each and every one of us as creatives can build our own tribe, our own ecosystem. And then when those ecosystems connect, you have a sustainable landscape which cannot be defeated. So um, if you want to be part of the core of this platform and watch the uprising, as I bring I and I network to the people as we bring the issues as we document repatriation in real time to the, the continent the building of Zion on earth if you want to see all of those things and support all of those movements we are the solution side of the internet join on the patreon um, so that we can become a force to reckon with and the lion pride on patreon we're gonna start having some zoom meetings when we when we build the core enough we're gonna interact and we're going to build and do things um, as a unit so if you're interested in that and some of the item in the lion pride have reached out to try to see how we can connect that is the best um, way to connect is to become part of the patreon with i and i workload right now is very difficult to address individual situations and the focus right now for all of us as Rastafari creatives has to be the economic um, centralization of what we're doing and putting it into structures so you know I have to practice what I preach because I tell my clients this uh, so it feels very good for I and I to be able to actually do this in, in real time so become part of the Lion Pride on Patreon make we build something um, impressive and, and strong and big up those who are already in the Lion Pride on Patreon but we have to big up the whole Lion Pride and again if you subscribe you're part of the Lion Pride that do have no cost that just means that you see the works you support the works and we have an attitude of gratitude for them ones there also do remember uh, we do have Haile Selassie's Ethiopia I wrote the book that I always wanted to read so when we talk about this visit to jamaica and his majesty coming when we talk about the rain falling when we talk about the sun um, bursting through the clouds as soon as the plane touched the ground um you know the 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 chalice under the plane no explosion we're gonna get into all of the mystical occurrences that took place on this visit but it all started in 1892 in the mountains of Ajerso Godo in the ancient land of Ethiopia and I wrote the book that I always wanted to read these kind of miraculous happenings um, are all throughout Haile Selassie's life and I wanted to show the foundations I wanted to paint a picture about Ethiopia I love epic fantasy like The Hobbit like Game of Thrones so I wanted to write it in that style because Ethiopia is a land of kingdoms a land of you know um, war between kingdoms and you know the lion of judah and all of these the solomonic dynasty all of these things are are woven into the history and an integral part of the history you know they've defeated many conquering nations have fallen so we wanted to document all of that and i wrote the book Haile Selassie's Ethiopia we now have signed copies on the website so if you want to get your signed copy of the book um, get the copy i feel good to be an author um, again that's the actionist part if you want to see something you create it and that's what the lion voice network is all about so give thanks for everyone for supporting the lion voice so let's now get into the topic uh, all right so we're talking about the groundation of Kadamawi first of all let's talk about what is groundation day this is what um, this is called within the Rastafari movement it's basically the day Haile Selassie touched the ground in Jamaica and 
it was the day a lot of things were revealed about the movement, about the strength of the movement, about the African presence in Jamaica, the love for Africa, the Pan-African vibration. Because it wasn't just Rastafari that came out. The Maroons came down the Abeng, was blowing the ancient, you know, um, bullhorn or the, the, that the Maroon used to call into battle and these things. Throughout his visit, you know, I was just reading an article in the Gleaner. They were talking about the Abeng was sounding throughout. So these things are significant. Um, you had Jamaicans that were coming from country and town all over. People walk all the way from Montego Bay, from all over. You know, our elders tell us these stories. You know, people walk from country to come to the airport to see this manifestation. This was when the Rastafari movement was gaining steam in Jamaica. The Black Power movement was gaining steam in Jamaica. Um, there was no red, gold, and green fabric anywhere in the island. Everything sell off. Um, our elders sing all of the um, the banners in the street, red, gold, and green drapes. So you can imagine what Kingston looked like. The the spiritual energy, you know, these colors are radiating everywhere. The positive, the upful vibration that was there. Um, why this visit was significant and I call this the divine ratification because his majesty with this visit to I stamp the Rastafari movement and it it symboled the end it symbolized the beginning of an era a, a new era for Rastafari in Jamaica and it was the end of a certain level of persecution that was you know the pinnacle of that was the Coil Garden massacre but it was a general state of persecution that was happening up until his majesty visit his majesty visit opened a door that changed the dynamic of the rastafari movement and that relationship i'm not saying that abuse or abuses didn't continue to happen after and as a matter of fact when he left a lot of men get beat up broke up you know jailhouse nothing because of how you know the the the, the police weren't able to control the crowds while Haile selassie was there but it was also the first time that Rastafari were allowed in public spaces, in official state residence. This was the first time that Rastafari was permitted to step into these places. So by that account, again, it was a fulfillment of prophecy in that the Lion of Judah came and broke the chain. And it was significant because remember, um, the Rastafari used to get teased. Your God now come on Jamaica, uh, a foolishness you attack. And then it was also later discovered that His Majesty was invited to Jamaica with the specific objective for him to come and denounce this movement because the officials were seeing the growing um, impact of Rastafari at this time. And they wanted him to come and kind of put, uh, quash it and, and make it null and void. The, in, the opposite happened, he came and caused an explosion of the movement which blossomed into the 70s, um, which, was, which was a golden era for Rastafari in terms of culture in Jamaica, and which is evidenced by the music and the, and the sound. Let us get forward to um, the, the intent of the government. So the government had called the Jamaica government through the British government, extended the invitation. His Majesty was to come. You know, they were complaining about this uprising. And, and it was not in their favor when His Majesty came because guess what? His Majesty did not denounce. In fact, His Majesty gave the leaders of the movement gold medallions. And this to I was an act of divine ratification. Um, again, Psalms 101. My eye shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with I. And to I, that is what um, those medallions represented in terms of the prophecy. There were other significant, you know, things. Because remember that the Redeemer in the Christian church, they always, I said he would come from the sky, you know. Um, there's analogies in the Bible about he rides on the wings of the wind. You know, there's all of this... Um, analogies and when we look at the visit of his majesty when the people from all over jamaica country um, town everyone come together and they were looking into the sky guess what they saw i hear plane so his majesty did come from the sky 
you know, and the elders tell the, the tale about how they could see the lion um, on the side of the plane, you know. And it was a mystic because the sky got dark. And then now, uh, while they were waiting and, you know, he was delayed, His Majesty. Let's, let's, before I get into that, I get excited too. And one of the things when we were at the Naya Bingi House in Washington, D.C., every year at this time, we used to sit at the elder foot. We used to have our eyes and then as the eyes pause and we have time for reasoning, the elders then one by one would give their eyes testimony as what they were doing to the day. Big up brother Jack, you know, an elder who has now passed. He said, oh, you know, he was being pressed by the crowd into the bayonets of the, the soldiers them to keep him back and oh, him see his majesty car pass in the corner and his majesty was waving and oh, he call out all of the names of the almighty, 72 names of the almighty to his majesty and his majesty look upon him and nod his head and you know, different, different isomonies we get. So big up Pa Jack, brother Jack with the isomony Ras Iris, you know, we hear from um, Ras Pido when he was here, Mama Bubbles, um, so many elders I rely on uh, when he was here with us. You know, we've had uh, the, uh, Baba Ras Marcos. We were blessed to have so many elders that were here with us, with us um, ones like Bongo Chef and Bongo Tani passing through. So, I mean, I can keep, keep calling names because, like I said, we were able to hear. And I just want to keep up that tradition because, again, we can't be on a corner reasoning with the youth them and passing on this knowledge and we're watching our elders them pass away from this earth so enough of the youths them don't get this history they may just go on youtube or on the tv and they see some imagery but they're not getting the richness of the eyewitness accounts that were there so we have to keep this reasoning about groundation day alive but the the, the clouds got dark the people were there at the airport waiting and waiting um, you know, His Majesty had first visited Trinidad, which, you know, went off without too much um, um, itches. You know, I think the grandstand tumbled on at Trinidad and certain other things happened. Um, you can correct me in the comments on my Trinidad, you know, because I do have ones in the Lion Pride in Trinidad. Um, and there's a video on YouTube, His Majesty visits Trinidad. So that was also significant, but there wasn't the overwhelming presence. Rastafari came to Trinidad later in time um, than it did into Jamaica in terms of the movement. Um, and then he made a brief stop in Barbados um, before. So they were waiting at the airport because, you know, his majesty was making these official state visits. And then now uh, um, they look up to the sky and the clouds got dark. And then they saw the, air, the airplane burst through the clouds and there's the ice money that a flock of um, white birds came and landed on the tarmac, you know. Um, many ones talk about the, the, the flock of white birds that came, you know, because they're all watching, you know, if people know how policy does, they have the, the viewing gallery and thing and people are watch. And the flock of white birds come now. And then them say, them look up and them see the airplane burst through the clouds. And once the airplane um, burst through the clouds, then guess what happened? The airplane burst through the clouds. Um, the sun came out, the clouds dissipated, everything does get bright. And then, you know, there was a roar, you know, even if you read the article in the Glean and many accounts online, it talks about the roar that went up like a thousand lions, you know, um, when His Majesty came and they were chanting because the Naya Bingi House was there. You know, you can even see in the official um, JIS, Jamaica Information Service documentary that they created. You know, they, they put up the night, you see the, 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 the placard with the Naya Bingi. There the Naya Bingi, you see Bongo Rocky, which I had the pleasure of meeting in Shashamani, um, part of I and I journey. Yesha and Bongo Rocky and Mama Baby, I were there at the airport. Other ones were there. so. Again, we've been able to get, and I was able to sit at the foot of Martimo Plano, and we'll talk about Martimo Plano shortly, um, but I was able to sit at the foot of Martimo Plano before he passed and hear his personal account and him give his testimony of that day to I, um, on more than one occasion too. So, you know, that, that is part of the special, and again, 
most of the youths them coming up today will not have this privilege so i know i have a responsibility and, and others who are in my age category have a responsibility to make sure we document and share this information that these elders pass on to i and i now the sunlight is there the airplane lands and the pandemonium because the soldiers them weren't ready the viewing gallery knocked down everybody swarmed the the, the 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 airport so the plane even had you know the propeller was spinning everything still moving and the the, the place was flooded remember these are the descendants of the ashanti fanti the Igbo. we have some yoruba some kikongo you know we have africans from all over and these were the warriors some of the rebels um these are the descendants you know so when popcorn talk about unruly you know it's very hard you know when you look even in the bible and you hear about judah and how judah moved different from israel that's how i look at jamaica you know jamaica the descendants of judah and if you look at the hebrewism of west africa journey of judah the tribes of judah um there is also some um anthropological um vocative, you know um, to show that the Ashanti, a lot of these West African tribes are coming from that same bloodline. Um, how we know spiritually is that the first place to really rise when the throne of David start moved through the earth, when you look, put on your spiritual goggles and look around the earth and as the throne of David is moving through, where was the biggest response on the planet? Jamaica. So same way when David was crowned, Judah rise. So, to I is just a, a spiritually self-evident uh, manifestation. But again, they, you know, you can read different um, uh, accounts. You know, I, I'm giving my perspective, so ones can share their perspective if it differs down in the comments. Down in the comments on the lion pride in this ecosystem, that's where the reasoning is happening. You know, in terms of the, if you agree or disagree. And we love that and i try to respond to every comment i know that the channel will grow to a size where that will not be possible for i but i'm enjoying while it's manageable to respond to every comment so make we have the reasoning in the comment section but yes so is majesty coming you know is that manifestation of the throne of david connecting with its base judah you know biggest support for his majesty even within ethiopia and there are accounts that he wept when he came out of the plane and saw um the people and him wave and he went back into the plane and they couldn't move remember this is a airport with tarmac but the man them come in there and remember said this is rastafari so chalice but herb was legalized through the island and everybody can account for this remember this was a, a felony could get you locked up for how much time they couldn't stop it while while his majesty was on the island of jamaica call it that cannabis was legal and again this was another part of the mystical occurrence because babylon you know restriction and infrastructure fell but one of the miracles that took place is that the plane didn't blow up command were smoking chalice underneath the plane wing round the tarmac you know, chalice a bun non-stop. Come on, bring crocus bag full of herb and different, you know. Herb is burning everywhere. Is, so it's cloud. And then again, when we go to the biblical illusion, he came in a cloud. You know, these clouds. And you hear about the cloud. He ride it in a, you know, Psalm 68. You know what I mean? Behold him that come by his name, John, all of these things. These were all swirling in the people's minds. And the fulfillment, because even if a man bond ja, which enough man bond the, the, the sound ja, and every man is entitled, but the history records that when Haile Selassie came, they did call him ja. They extolled him by the name ja. That happened. Call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, but we have heard the testimony of the elders. And again, Pajak, one of them who say he called him ja, you know, and his majesty so i look at jah as just another title that his majesty was given you know and that is a historical fact that's not i and i making up anything that's just a fact and 
I find when we deal with the facts of His Majesty's reign and His Majesty is much more miraculous than we have to go into mythology and that's why I wrote Haile Selassie's Ethiopia the way I did so even though it's wrote like an epic fantasy I have annotations, I put my citations everywhere in there because it's history even though it's miraculous um, but this was important so to even get His Majesty off of the plane they had to go get Elder Mortimer plan on these things again at this time let me paint a picture at this time and I don't want to make the episode too long but you see how much there is to talk about His Majesty visiting Jamaica I'm not even scratching the surface I don't go stadium you I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, go all of them you know JC him visit all these things do school and former Prime Minister greet him my family Jerry Small you know um, was there all of them thing that you know so we don't go into none of that um, what we are talking about now is just even coming out of the plane and they couldn't control the crowd so they had to call a Rastafari brethren which they viewed Martin Plano as one of the men that you know they, they identify him as a leader but he was just a respected brethren at that time there was no leaders per se other than um, Prince Emmanuel, um, you know, Claudius Henry, certain other one who were there. Um, Reverend Claudius Henry, you know, the, some of the earlier ones, then, but Naya Bingi, them time there is more of a coalition of elders. You know, you had certain ones, but it wasn't no one elder where could sway the thing. And Martin Plana would have been in the more uh, Pan-African political, you know, vibration. But uh, he was respected by all of the different Rastafari at that time. And he went up on the plane and he said, I, I am instructed that the crowd be made calm and they were able to clear a path, the red carpet, get dashway. So there was no walking on the red carpet, the no honor guard, no trumpet, all of that get fling way. Um, and this is why, again, someone says groundation because the first step he stepped down was not on a red carpet for the high and the noble but it was on the ground you know the almighty step on the ground and shook the whole jamaica jamaica was never the same and still has not been the same since his majesty touched down again it was the first time rastafari was allowed in public spaces his majesty himself broke that chain presenting the gold medallions and the leaders um, of government were given cigar cases with you know that were in the shape of a coffin and Donald Sanks enough for the man them drop out so his majesty um, again sign and symbol what was hidden from the wise and the prudent shall be revealed unto the babe and the suckling so his majesty um, did not denounce the Rastafari movement you know we heard from the elders um, that he asked why do they do what they do and asked one of his advisors to go and inquire and then when he heard they told him about the Nazarite vow they told him about certain things and you know he said leave them they know what they're doing you know we've heard that testimony from various elders and there's no official denunciation that you can see in fact you see Prince Emmanuel receiving his medallion you see you know, Douglas Mack, Fillmore, Anvil Ranga, different other ones who got their gold medallions. These men were getting beat up, uh, persecuted for the police. So you can imagine, and it was the, it was the request of the Ethiopian government after seeing the airport um, that Rastafari representation be at all official gatherings that the Jamaica government had to comply. His Majesty was the only king that ever stayed at King's House. There's so much to the visit you know what i mean and he commanded the government the government was at its command they could not persecute ones for the herb while he was on the island there's so much and again i don't want these episodes to be too long um bob marley was not rastafari at this time so a lot of ones come to the chat to bob marley bob marley was in america at this time um so bob marley was not there rita marley gives the ice the morning Nana Rita, um, big up Nana Rita, who has done a lot of philanthropic work over the years. So we give thanks to Nana Rita. Um, but Nana Rita gave the testimony that 
she um look and see the stigma tag you know christ in his mind say and we never see none of that but that is her ice money and you know she reasoned with bob and that was what you know one of the catalysts for help bob evolve within his chart so that is also very powerful we also know from elders like ras iris bob used to go down a naya bingi down in Bakawal, you know, which Bakawal today would be Tivoli Gardens, you know, where they and the Rasta camp. Bob, as a young youth, before him put on lots, used to go down there and sit up with the elders, not for the elders, them knowing well. So, you know, that influence was there before him go to America, but when he came forward and see how the place transformed, uh, of course, it had a major impact. So, again, that visit helped with the catalyst of you know Barhini Selassie or Robert Nesta Marley who became the biggest um, trumpet for his majesty on the planet even up to this day you know most ones know Rastafari through Bob Marley and we have to big up the work where he did and always you know uh, on his stage um, heights up his majesty the clear the glory of his majesty so we have to big up Robert Nesta Marley um, for that uh, but yeah the, the, the visit was so magnificent and there's so much that we can talk about the visit to the University of the West Indies again stadium um, uh, Montego Bay he left to Montego Bay went to Jamaica by train and thing and all everywhere he went the, the roads both sides were lined with people so Jamaica has never seen that before and has still not seen it since so it is a day that goes into the annals of history and I don't think any world leader in the history of the world have seen something like that um, so it's a very mystical mighty occurrence and we as Rastafari will celebrate this day forever and again it's always you know i always bring this up when people talk about the train ride in canada people talk about his majesty denying rastafari you have to listen very closely um to the message that he gives in these things because there's never no object denial or denunciation of rastafari practice yes he sent the church to jamaica because naturally jamaica of the most churches in the world he wants to make sure that the Ethiopian Ethiopia Orthodox is the bedrock of the society um, as an Orthodox he's the defender of the faith the fulfillment you know we would say of the Orthodox faith in the same way that Yeshua was the fulfillment of the Hebrew faith his followers are not following the Old Testament um, Judaic law you know he elevated them to their child to what became the Orthodox Christianity you know the almighty is within you his majesty said that yeshua showed us that the temple his sacrifice made the heart of man the temple of the most high so it's an internal fulfillment and it's the same way for i and i as rastafari it's an internal fulfillment the hearts of the rastafari movement now is the temple of his imperial majesty emperor Selassie the first we now have taken on his movement which was the raising of the standard of living of people the unification of all humanity the building of heaven on earth we have taken on that mandate you know he is the head we are the goody or what they would call the body but we would say the goody that is here to fulfill it and the groundation day again was that ratification where we came to say regardless of how things play out in the world i'm not going to declare that i'm the almighty because as a human in flesh no one should exalt themselves in that way I am a servant of the Most High, and in doing so I reveal myself as the Almighty in my service in my works and we the people declare him as the Almighty is the people the, is the earth Orthodox Church give him the crowning the anointing of the King of Kings and the conquering line of the tribe of Judah it is the Rastafari and the people around the world that, that crown him as the Almighty and these things and his accolades you know all of the masonic lodges and everywhere that he went on the planet was glory honor and majesty as was, as was foretold so we give thanks for the groundation and again the revelation that came out of this small little island called jamaica and we want to hear from the item especially from trinidad barbados 
Haiti, if you are any of the lion pride from those islands, drop a comment, let me know anything you know about is my visit to those places i was born in jamaica at the university of the west indies so he visited my birthplace so i have to talk about jamaica but we know he's a greater um child and again for the rastafari movement there's no visit that's more important of the global um tours of of his imperial majesty that 1966 april 21st visit in the annals and as we speak right now naya bingi is chanting so we big up the naya bingi house globally big up Baba shanty house globally we also celebrate the foundation 12 tribe of israel all of the rastafari brethren and sister uh massive respect on this moment as we come together um to again fulfill the teaching and the mission of his imperial majesty and as we come together to tell our own story because the time has come for the lions to tell our own story and this is the lion's voice Lion we line out the generation of those that chose to take the face of the great i am the emperor Haile Selassie and King Rastafari of Ethiopia well, he's the almighty creator, in flesh and in bone, and he's seated upon King David's throne. Well, I and I, I and I came to tell the nation on the microphone. Yo, let them know, righteousness is here to conquer The finger king, trample down those evilest monsters Mussolini, he's getting burnt up like ganja Our nation needs to get stronger, give thanks, our locks is getting longer The angel revealed the scriptures, the number six Verse five, my antenna, channel at the heights of the most high Crown king of king, lord of lords Now you do the math, Rastafari, comfort I and I with the staff, children of Israel Make sure you step on the right path It's the 21st century, the wicked out to fill the wrath Of the ancient of days, and for behind Ali Selassie, I'm pure in all his ways. That's why I am quasi and I praise the Naya Bingy King. Let the children know the salvation Naya Bingy bring. Yo, it's conscious hip hop music strictly for the king. For those who don't know, it's a Naya Bingy thing here in the Naya Naya Bingy King. Naya Bingy King. Naya Bingy King. With the scepter lightning. Naya Bingy King. Naya Bingy King. Naya Bingy King. With the scepter lightning. Fire Bingy King. Fire Bingy King. Fire Bingy King. Earthquake. Tell him about Selassie Terrible and dreadful With the head full of sheep wool Babylon you better keep cool Cause he rules Earth is just his footstool You think you somebody But you only just his tool Whirlpools, whirlwinds Blow away they sins Instead of following the shepherd They were following trends We said the judgment They killed too many innocent Now they got to feel the wrath Of the omnipotent Omniscient king With the scepter lightning From the birds to the creeping things All hail him Selassie I Guide I and I Provide for I and I Live in I and I, so we can't die. Must live eternal. I up in Mount Zion, I side by the most high. I am uh, Bingy King. King, King of all kings. Can't forget Every Queen Omega minute. with the scepter lightning. Naya, Bingy King, Naya, Bingy King, Naya, Bingy King with the scepter lightning. Naya, Bingy King, Naya, Bingy King, Naya, Bingy King with the scepter lightning. I see bring the judgment on my enemies. Remember we, we the Hebrew that you claim to be The game that you play lame to we Cause they put me in shackles and chains And that's plain to see They ain't got no name for we I see, I see I strike like hurricane rains off the sea We still remember slavery Ain't too much change Things still seem the same to we Black man, your brain ain't free Feels so much pain every time I try to watch TV 